another edition of Arts and Ideas. I'm Sue Swinan, and I'm delighted to be in Worcester today at the studio of uh, painter and art educator Tom Grady, who is our guest, and uh, Tom has uh, agreed to show us around his studio and show us some of the work that he does. Uh, he's uh, an, a professor at Assumption College, where he uh, teaches drawing and painting, and uh, he's also a teacher at Worcester Art Museum. Right. Yeah? Right. Yeah. So, uh, Tom, nice to have you with us, and thank you for giving us some of your time. Oh, no problem. Yeah, it's, um, it's an honor, really. Oh, yeah. thanks. Uh, how long have you been in Worcester, or are you a Worcester native? Or? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I grew up in Auburn. Oh. So I went to Auburn High School, moved out, went to college, lived a couple other places, ended up buying a house in Worcester in 2004. So I've been here for about uh -huh. seven years. Seven years? Yeah. And how long have you been in this space? Since August. Oh, yeah, so fairly so, new. Yeah. I love your studio. It's so full of light and uh, very, very homey, too. <laughs> I could see that you want to spend a lot of time yeah. here. My, my mom made the curtains. Oh, the little, yeah, I, she I made knew some somebody curtains had a hand in that. That's what makes it homey. Um, how often do you get to the studio with teaching and uh, being a father, I know you have yeah. two kids. How how does that work out? Uh, yeah, usually I put the kids to bed around eight, and then come here in the evenings, eight to ten, eight to midnight sometimes. Oh wow! And then uh, and then Fridays, um, eight to twelve, I'm able to come in. So eight to twelve. Yeah, it's mostly night shift that I'm wow. here. So I don't, I, you know, I don't get to see the, the light. You know, it's not like it is today. Usually yeah. it's just dark and you get the street lights outside. Maybe that's why some of your new things have much more dramatic <laughs> lighting. It's not so much about the daylight. Right, it's right yeah. about more uh, subconscious kind of light and drama. Yeah, yeah, they're a little darker. Um, yeah. So uh, now you've taught at the Worcester Art Museum for how long? Uh, since 2000. Uh -huh. So I think that was the first place I went right after I graduated. From RISD, I'm like, what do I do? I went to the Worcester Art Museum, gave him my resume. He said, you know, for teaching. I said, have you ever taught any classes? I said, no. He said, okay, we can hire you as a TA. So I worked as a TA for a couple oh. couple months, and then ended up getting my own classes. Uh huh. Yeah. So. so do you find now? Now does Assumption have an art major? Yeah, it's a studio art major. We usually get about uh, seven or so students a year that will that are art that majors. Are, yeah. Major and that. is there uh, a big emphasis in that program on the basics, drawing and painting? And yeah, you know, we definitely stress the basics. Um, usually drawing and painting is grounded in observation. And then as they get better, there's room for exploration. So in their senior seminar, um, art studio seminar, they can kind of choose the project that they want to work on. Mm -hmm. A lot of students, though, um, are in graphic design which mm -hmm. is sort of mixed with the studio arts. Mm -hmm. And so we get students working with photography digitally, uh, as well as sort of traditionally with paint and sculpture mm -hmm. in that senior seminar class. It's really interesting. I was wondering how much uh, the technology has impacted the curriculum, you know, uh -huh. uh, because so much of the graphic design is done on the computer. and. Yeah, I'd, I'd say quite a bit. You know, um, there's a big push to promote the graphic design program. And we, uh, there's a lot of students that are interested in it. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're getting more and more students looking for graphic design. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's pretty like much web all. Web design. Yeah, and, and that's all done on the computer. You know, mm -hmm. the classrooms aren't studio. They're, they're uh, computer labs. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm, I'm teaching, uh, along with drawing and painting, illustration. And uh, occasionally I'll teach a graphic design course. Do you do much on the computer yourself? Uh, yeah, I actually do quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, I'm in familiar reference with it. to your own work, do you do any image? Yeah, I do. I do. I compose a lot of Im a lot of my um, images first that I'm going to make into a painting. So I'll compose them on Photoshop no for a little bit. Yeah. See, yeah. the technology yeah. is wonderful. It's, yeah. it's it's what we have at our disposal today. Right. Every every generation uses the new technology sure. of its yeah. time. Yeah. So that's good that you uh, you grew up with that and are familiar with it. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's nice, you know, because I'm, I'm able to teach a, a, a graphic design course or an illustration mm -hmm. course that's mm -hmm. based with the computer. The other thing about having the computer as part of your uh, study in art school is 
it it's, gives you a lot more options in terms of jobs when you graduate, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was never an emphasis, though, the computer. It was always the basics, you know, usually doing stuff by hand and, and mm -hmm. um, drawing, painting, you know, because that's that stuff's kind of hard to learn. Um, and, you know, you can just easily translate that to the computer um, because the computer is just like another color. tool. Yeah, it's just Those another basics. tool. I mean, yeah. it doesn't doesn't do the work for you. It's just another another medium. How do you find the uh, yeah. the art world in Worcester? You know, I mean, uh, yeah. how does that work out in terms uh, like you have a lot of artists in this building yeah. and uh, it's pretty. Yeah, it's I, are there it's nice. It's cozy. Everybody knows everybody else, which is good. You know. Um, and so there's some opportunities. I'm affiliated with Arts Worcester. You know, mm -hmm. I would show in their biennials or you know their member mm -hmm. shows. I try to show in there locally, um, which is nice. And um, well, yeah, there's there are a lot of uh, local shows that uh, give opportunities to artists to exhibit. Right. Like Tom was actually just the uh, top award winner in the uh, inaugural show at uh, Worcester State University, yeah. and. Uh, that was a really significant honor. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you're offered opportunities you might not get maybe in a bigger city, like I'm able to be on the board of Arts Worcester. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's nice, I can kind of, you know. And the studio space is cheaper. Cheap studio space, and you know, I was able to curate a show at Arts Worcester, it's called Drawn to Life. That and was then, a good um, show, I saw that. Yeah, thanks, thanks. And then Assumption wanted that show, so they asked me to put it on at their library. Mm -hmm. um, so it offers me, you know, I'm, I'm able to curate a show, and and do mm -hmm. a bunch of different things that maybe, you know, in a bigger city might be more difficult to do. Yeah. So is this what you're working on now? Yes, I'm working on this painting. Um, I have a working title for it. Uh, I'm thinking of calling it Consume and Produce. And so it's about, you know, um, things, things that we buy, things that we consume, uh, things that we make. some of your other paintings had a lot to do with consumerism and stuff and stuff that a uh, little bit. I guess I'm into it now that, you know, yeah. I, I have little kids at home and so we're always having to go to the grocery store, having to get diapers, having to get, uh, you know, just having all this stuff around and now that we didn't have. The, the excessive toys. Excessive toys, excessive yeah. Excessive toys. So yeah. this is in the supermarket. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I go to Shaw's. I'm in Shaw's like every other day, I think. You know, we all have to eat. Pro <laughs> but more now with the kids. Um, and the produce section is just beautiful. I love it. You know, all the different things, uh, the colors, but also, you know, the, the fact that we can have all this food at our disposal so easily. Yeah. Whenever we want food, we can just go yeah. get whatever we want. Well, I have so. to draw the audience's attention to uh, some of the uh, trompe l'oeil effects in this painting, which is just developing, by the way. It's not a finished painting. But you might notice some of these uh, paste-it notes and this is actually just painted on the surface. And just that's painted. What you would call trompe l'oeil. <laughs> and uh, things like the apple, which seem to project out of the painting, or this apple core. So there's kind of a funny play of things that seem like they're on the surface, sitting on the surface of the painting, as opposed to things that are being in the, yeah. illustrated in the body of the painting itself. Yeah, I've done a few pieces like that where I've tried to put some, use the painting itself as a tabletop and then paint objects as if they're sitting on top mm -hmm. of it. Um, and so, you know, I'm just kind of having fun with that idea now. Plus, I always like to add pop culture references in paintings, uh, you know, E.T., Godzilla, Alien. All the Barbies. Barbies, <laughs> you know, we got uh, a million Barbies at home now. And, uh, uh, and they made it into the painting, I, I don't know why, but um, uh, so, you know, the painting started first as just wanting to m make uh, an image of this, this uh, supermarket. Um, and then it just kind of progressed from there as I added different layers to it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, adding the figures. Uh, and I was these asking you about that before, like how much you have the idea for the painting in your head before you start. Yeah. or how much it kind of finds its own way. Yeah, it's, you know, like I said, it started just wanting to make a painting of the Shah's produce section and then, you know, wanting it to be about consumption and production um, and, and produce, you know, there's a little bit of a play on words there since it's the produce section. But, um, 
you know, and then I'm just trying to figure out different ways that I can uh, incorporate those ideas uh, mm -hmm. into the image. And, um, and it's kind of fun, you know, you're exploring new things, you're not sure how it's going to turn out. And so it's sort of going to be about the, the sticky notes that are painted Trump lawyer are going to be about the process of making the paintings. I always make, you know, write down little notes about what to do. Oh, that's a great quote, or I should add this to my painting. Here's a sticky note. And they're all over my desk, my office, at home. And I, I'm starting to collect them. And so I thought it'd be fun to add that um, as a you know, symbolic element referring to how the painting was made. Yeah. So. Well, I have to bring your attention to um, this little painting area over here because that's where your daughter Isabella paints. Yes. And uh, I had to really laugh because she's got sticky notes all over her painting. Right, yeah. She's, she does what Daddy does, you know? Yeah. So she says, Daddy, give me some sticky notes, you know? She saw me working with them. Uh, you know, she painted bananas, carrots. Here's a plane. Uh -huh. I'm not sure if you can see the plane there. It's a good job for uh, a five-year-old. That's great. So, you know, it's always fun now, to bring her in. Now, does she work right off your palette? No, she has her stuff right over here. She has her own palette. Yeah, she her uses a, a acrylic paint. Oh, that's better. And uh, yeah. she has her own brushes. But she's, she's great. Now, you're yeah. working primarily in oil, but you do a lot of drawing as well. Is that right? Yes, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll do some drawings and charcoal on paper first if I need to work out some ideas. Uh, I don't have many drawings up just because they're easier to uh, store them flat. Store them flat, keep them, you know, keep them safe. Uh, mm -hmm. I have some under here I, I store. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Some figure drawings and such uh -huh. under there. But now that I'm composing more on the he's computer. He's a terrific draftsman, which shows yeah. in his painting. Thanks. You know, he can just draw with one stroke of the brush. So. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So now that what? But now that uh, I've incorporated the computer a little more, I, I, I don't draw as much. Uh, in, uh, you know, I'll draw on my sketchbook at some pre preliminary ideas, but sometimes I'll, um, I'll just start composing on the computer with photographs as well. And you were saying that a lot of times the exploration and discovery for what the painting is going to be takes place in the drawing process or in that preliminary right. thinking about it with the computer or the drawing or whatever. Yeah, it's a and sketch it, phase. Yeah. Yeah. Then once I have a solid idea, I usually I'll start something on a now, big does scale. Did it ever like this. take a whole new direction after that? Uh, well, this I think this did. This took a whole yeah. new direction. I didn't yeah. foresee the the Trump Loy aspect or the um, you know Christian iconography. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it just came about uh, through the process. I am crazy about this painting, and he said he's not finished with it yet. But I just think it has so much drama to it, and it, it's just asking so many questions, and uh, there's so many possible interpretations. I don't know if you have one interpretation, or? Um, well, I, my daughter asked me what the painting was about, and I told her, there's this guy, and he's trying to climb away from the hands. And, uh, and she ended up making a painting of her own about the same subject. But I, I mean, there's no real overarching uh, meaning behind it, other yeah. than, you know, well, that's the just, thing. He could be struggle. climbing, I don't know. but he could be falling. Yeah. Or he, could, they could be catching him. I mean, I, or they could be <sighs> grasping at him. Yeah, know, yeah. So. I just um, wanted to make it, you know. And some of my paintings, I like sort of that amb ambiguity or the mystery yeah. of what's going on. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm influenced by 16th, 17th century European figurative painters, and so that I think that comes through in these, you know, yes. with the dramatic light, the dark background. Um, well, you really uh, can so. handle paint. You know, I love the way you use the paint so effectively. You, it's good paint. Uh, it, it makes substance. It makes a surface that's beautiful and uh, very physically there, a reality in its own right. Well, part of what I really love about painting is this, the dual nature of painting, the fact that it's material and that it has a surface, right? So you can make, call attention to the surface, the fact that the thing's flat. And on a wall, but then there's also the illusion or the representation that you're looking through the surface into a scene, right? And so I love to kind of play with that uh, dualism where, where does it stop becoming paint and become an image? And when does it stop becoming an image and, and the paint reveals itself? Um, and so for me, like, like that, pa painting is like magic in a way. It is you know? magic, it is. So, it really is. Um, but uh, that whole idea of it being a physical reality on a plane that 
is so engaging and, it, and how can it be expressive? How does it communicate with us just by being this surface of paint? You know? Right. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, in, in color and all that, you know, symbolic. Well, you were talking about the ambiguity, and I'll, I'll, I'll say my, uh, my, love, my loved statement that uh, Stanley Kunis says, you know, uh, he says, the poem, with, the poem without secrets lies dead on the page. And so I love that idea because it's true in all the arts. When there's much to be discovered or debated or thought about, the painting is much more alive than if it's all spelled out and a done deal, you're done with it. Right. I guess I think about it more in terms of just asking questions rather than having answers. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's what painting, poetry, the arts tend mm -hmm. to do. You know, they don't, but they your you work answer. is always very engaging, so that you want to take time to study it and think yeah. about it and ask the questions. So uh, oh, thanks. I really like that. Thanks. I was noticing this painting of your, you said yeah. that's a, a portrait of your mom that you're still working on? Yeah, yet? yeah, almost done. It's still wet, so be careful. But yeah, okay. I'm working on um, trying to do 100 portraits in a year. So that's one, one project that I'm Wonderful. trying. And, and I'm starting with family, you know, people that I, I, I think oh, I should paint a portrait of them. And then I'll branch out to the larger community to fill out the 100. That would 100. be nice to have a show of those. Yeah, I can envision all hundred up on the wall at once. Now your so. family's in the area, right? Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. And were they? Was your were your mom and dad supportive of you wanting to be an artist? Yeah, hundred percent supportive. They yeah. were just, you know, uh, supported me. They would have supported me no matter what I did. So. You know, it's interesting. Yeah. But one of the things I really like about realism today and people who are working with the figure and. Uh, representational subject matter is the way some people are able to make the same subject matter you know the portrait the head the body the landscape somehow they can make it look fresh and contemporary and exciting right. and it's a miracle you know how can it not be the same old same old but it yeah. is I think there's some archetypes in, in art that are hard to get away from portraiture you know, I think um, just the fact that we're so sensitive to, to other people's, you know, uh, likeness. Um, I think there's something sort of biological and, and, and innate in some subjects that. Well, the other thing is the human we'll figure draw is so in, expressive. You know? yeah. the, the figure itself is just so yeah. variable and expressive. And well, I mean, it's, it's who we are. I wanted you to see this painting because I think it's really an interesting one. and. Uh, a significant one too. This is the piece that won the uh, top prize in Worcester State Show. But uh, I notice you work your figures really quite large. Uh, yeah, I try to, um, in the big pieces, keep the figures life size. Um, it just sort of adds uh, a sense of realism to it, you know, and it sort of confronts the viewer more so than if it were smaller, you know. It does. It's a real scale. Size, scale makes a difference. I think so, yeah. Now, do you consider yourself a realist? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Uh, a <laughs> painter, uh, maybe just a painter. But yeah. yeah, you know, everything I do usually uh, has some uh, sort of uh, representational element to it. If it's a figure or landscape or um, interior, um, yeah. But yet you're somehow manipulating the reality. Well, in this one, yeah, you know, I try to find ways to um, sort of interfere with that. Either if it's doing trompe l'oeil over, you know, another painted surface. In this one, there, there's three paintings this is in sort one. Of trompe l'oeil, in a way. Yeah, a little you think bit. Think so because it pops out so much. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, in this, I, call, I, I I usually work in series. So I did a series of about three paintings like this in which I started with one image as an underpainting. And then, you know, traditionally, your underpainting would match your overpainting, right, through art history. And so now I'm just trying to play with the idea of, of switching putting the images. Things, yeah, and just, just overpainting. Like apples, where you're putting things on the surface of the painting. Right, right, yeah. calling attention to the paint the more. The space is very tricky and complex. And uh, and so for like this, I, I might not know how it's going to turn out. And I might not even know what I'm going to paint over. I'll just start with something like this one started first just as like, oh, I want to um, refresh my anatomy. And so I did this uh, skeletal back view of a mm -hmm. figure. And it was all just the skeleton. 
So it was just an anatomical study of the skeleton. And I thought, well, bones? yeah, it was just the, the bones. bones. Yep. And you can might you might be able to see. I, you know, it got yeah. all covered up, but huh. uh, there's a little bit of the ulna right there. Yeah. But and then I said, well, what else can I do with it? Well, I'll put the muscles in. So I went deep to superficial with all the muscles, layered that in. You can still see some of the Maybe red. That's why it feels like it has so much presence and body. Well, there's a lot of layers to it. Yeah. yeah. So then the muscles went in, and even the muscles were layered. You know, the deepest yeah. to the most surface. Uh, and then I scraped the skin on when I was done. I just took the palette knife and scraped on the, all the yeah, skin. It's really a rough texture, but it <coughs> contrasts very, uh, there's an aesthetic tension between the rough surface of the skin, which you would expect to be smooth, and then the very smoothness of some of these mechanical elements that right. uh, are such a strange juxtaposition and I think that creates a lot of meaning in the painting yeah. too don't you yeah I think so you know um, you know the machine element uh, is part of it um, there's the shirt element too which is quite see-through you know so I'm really trying to push the limits of oil paint using it thick to this these yeah. thin glazes you know and it's kind of like inside outside too like the figure is almost like on the hanger, you know, with... <laughs> oh, right, yeah, yeah, that was just a little joke, yeah, yeah. with the, the screw in the head. So there's so. a lot of visual play in it. It's very interesting, I think. Uh, it almost feels metaphysical to me, or whatever that means, but... <laughs> yeah, like a, <laughs> like a futurist type yeah, of a painting, maybe, but... Yeah. Futuristic, yeah, I think so. Uh, All right, let's look at another one. I love seeing your work. Oh, yeah. Well, I want to look at this for a minute because I think this is really surprising. What What is this? Oh, uh, well, it's just me playing around. You know, as a kid, I would always um, make these these models, especially model airplanes. I loved, um, and so I thought I'd try to make them out of cereal boxes. So uh, you know, I found this this model plane here, put it together, and used it as a template, and recreated it. Um, but it's kind of, of like boxes. origami. Yeah, it's kind of like origami. You know, it's cut and, and glue, and everything's folded, and it's uh, made out of uh, I think three pieces of. of uh, and you said this was pieces. made out of one piece. Yeah, you know, I started making these little platonic solids just for fun, um, and uh, you know, I love cereal boxes. I love the cereal aisle. I don't know if you see a theme here, but uh, uh, cereal boxes are, are really interesting. Just the color and design. Um, and so again, keeping with the idea of you know sort of mass production and, and consumerism. consumerism. Yeah, but what I like about it is it shows a side of him that is just playing around, having fun, making stuff. Right. So I might. I don't know if I'll use these for anything or if I'll end up making a but you installation. Never you never yeah. know how one idea leads to another or opens up another door. Yeah. So yeah, it's just playing around. This is a really wild piece, another of that, uh, the large figures, right, and uh, the kind of falling through space. This one is obviously deep space. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, I was influenced a little bit uh, when the, with the orbs and, and trying to show depth with the painting. Uh, and the influence came from, there was a show at the Worcester Art Museum of um, planetary photographs, which were, which were really interesting. And so. It kind of helped me solve the problem. How do I show space on this, um, or depth on this really dark ground? So we'll see the I, I do, I, there's a little reference in my mind to uh, Robert Longo, but uh, you know, the way he gives those emotionally charged figures, the life-size kind of overbearing figures. Mm -hmm. But the other thing I really liked about this painting that I thought was very unusual, if you're able to see these very gestural scratches that kind of crisscross the whole surface of the painting. They, um, I don't know, they do something really strange to the, to the painting in that they keep it from being a rendering of something that's kind of photographic. They, they make a different statement. What were you thinking when you did that? Uh, well, I was thinking of adding, actually adding a sense of movement to uh -huh. the piece, movement and the fact that the, you got these floating orbs and they're very still, so I thought to trace maybe their path through the painting and then uh, and just to add a little bit of movement to them. Or little meteorite type things or 
yeah, yeah, just to show atoms them. flowing or something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, just there, to it, show some energy. It, it puts a, a tremendous amount of energy into the field, right. and as though he's supported in some kind of energy field. <laughs> no, it's very interesting. Just metaphysical. Yeah, I, I think I was looking at some electron um, microscope photographs of particle collisions. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I got mm -hmm. that swirl from yeah. just looking at that. So I like it. I wanted you to see these portraits he's doing of his family. Now, you're doing a whole sequence, you said, of 100 portraits? Yeah, so these are part of that series where I'm trying to challenge myself to see if I can make uh, 100 portraits in a year. Um, and this is and a self-portrait? It's a self-portrait, yep. And your wife? Portrait of my wife, Susan, and my son, Tommy. And that's day one, right when he was born. And so, um, I you know, can't believe his head is like a perfect circle. Yeah, it was great. It's like a sphere, you know, and with it's a couple true. of features. It looks just yeah, right. yeah. And um, you know, I use a lot of photo reference uh, for my work, and in this case, for him, you know, I had to use a photo. I couldn't go and bring my paints into the delivery room and start painting. You know, it wouldn't. Susan wouldn't like that. But um, but when I can, I try to paint uh, from direct observation, um, and then you know, I do use photographs and and. Um, in some of my work. So for this series, the other thing I wanted to try to do is, is in these 100 portraits, get uh, somebody at a different age uh, in their life. So, you know, here's portrait 31, uh, there's portrait zero, I suppose. Um, and so all the way up from, you know, zero to 100 years of age. Won't that make a wonderful exhibition? If yeah. Have a little conceptual aspect to it as yeah, well. I can imagine seeing it all up on the wall, um, you know, a lifetime at a glance. It seems kind of it would be interesting and to look at. you can at. do your mom and your, all the, your old relatives, and, and I'm available if you need anybody for age 39. 39, yeah, I was thinking 28 maybe. but um, Yeah, so I'll start with my friends and families and then try to branch out and get some more people from the community involved. Well, I think that's probably all we have time for today, yeah. but I've really enjoyed looking at your work, Tom, and um, thanks again oh, for thanks. having us. Thanks, it was us. a pleasure, it was really. really a nice experience. Join us Thanks. again next time for another edition of Arts and Ideas. Mm -hmm.